Hello, thanks for watching my channel, LSH Flashing and Tuning. This video is part two of a, uh, of, of, of a set of videos or a pair of videos that I'm doing on Dodge fuel synchronization. Um, I don't like doing videos like this because when I do videos, I generally like to base them on facts and uh, firsthand knowledge of, of, of a system that I've worked on. However, um, it's been about six months since I did the last video, and I've been trying to think of how to do it, and I really didn't have the right props. At the time, I didn't think I had the right props or examples to show so that I could kind of uh, teach or, or explain what I was trying to say. But after doing a video on GM, uh, General Motors Marine Fuel Injection Systems the other day, I realized, you know, I do uh, maybe I do have enough props, and uh, I should do the video because uh, it's, it's been a long time. I need to go ahead and get it done. So, um, having said that, um, what, I, what I mean by not having facts is what I'm going to do is present information on General Motors fuel injection, and I'm going to extrapolate that, those concepts over to Dodge fuel injection. And there's a, it's based on uh, educated guesses, my hunch, educated guesses, but also some common sense. And um, so let's, uh, let's talk about um, how this applies to Dodge fuel injection. So... On the internet, there's a lot of uh, hype surrounding a term called fuel synchronization. And the hype is that when you put a distributor a distributor in a Dodge Magnum 360, you rotate the distributor to, uh, let me pick the distributor up. This is a General Motors distributor, but it's very similar. Um, so when you put a Dodge Magnum 360 distributor in, this clamp is not locked on the shaft. It actually clamps down, but you can rotate the distributor independent of the clamp, then tighten the clamp, and it holds the distributor where you last left it. But what you're really doing, you're not setting the timing in the engine. You're setting what's called fuel synchronization. So all over the Internet are uh, places of business and, and information saying you set the fuel synchronization with a special kind of scan tool, which is true, and you set it for plus six, plus eight, minus four, minus two, whatever. And these people are claiming that those numbers mean that, or those numbers make the engine run better because you're setting the fuel injector firing, uh, timing the fuel injector firing using that distributor rotation. So with the information I'm about to provide, I'm going to say that's, I'm going to try to debunk that and say that's a bunch of bull. And again, I don't like doing videos like this because I don't have any hard facts, but I think with enough information or with enough common sense and extrapolation of General Motors, you can kind of understand where I'm going. So, and I'm not really trying to call anybody out as, as dumb or anything like that. I'm just trying, trying to present information. And I welcome somebody to come back and say, hey, you're wrong. This is how it works, really how it works, because I've got the proof. Well, by proof, what I need to see, or what they're going to have to tell me or show me, is code in the Dodge computer where it uses fuel synchronization, uh, the fuel synchronization number that's set by a scan tool in the timing of the injector. And what I'm about to tell you is it has nothing to do with it. So let's go. So as you saw in my part one of this two part two set video series, the uh, Dodge cam sensor looks almost identical to this. This is the General Motors cam sensor in a 4.3 liter V6 out of a 2002 GMC Sierra truck. You can see the similarities. There's a cam sensor there. You get this half circle metal part that rotates and blocks the sensor for half, half of the distributor revolution and the other half is not blocking it. So this sensor provides a resolution of basically one um, for half or maybe two. For half a rotation, it's on. For another half rotation, it's off. So really, that's only two separate signals that it gets for one revolution this distributor. So you might be saying, okay, well, how does this apply to Dodge? Well, what this does, and let me back up. So fuel injection has what's called, modern fuel injection is what's, saw, is what's called sequential fuel injection. And the reason they do sequential fuel injection, it makes idle emissions better. And what it means, you're timing the injector to fire at a specific point in the rotation or the rotation cycle of the engine and what they do is, in General Motors, for example, there's an LS motor. I'm building that. Um, so in LS motors, the injector timing is typically, it's called end of injector timing. And then on a factory application, it's typically about 300 degrees. And let me explain how they define that. So zero degrees, it's number one cylinder at top dead center. 
So 360 degrees is all the way around one time, and that's number one cylinder at the top of at the top, but it's at the end of the uh, exhaust stroke. It was coming up, exhausting. It's now reached the top. Now it's going back down, and that's the intake stroke. So 306 degrees is at the top of the exhaust stroke. So the injector fires, excuse me, 360. 300 degrees is where the injector uh, stops firing or stops spraying fuel, but it's at idle, so it's a very short time. So the fuel is sprayed at approximately 300 degrees. That's 60 degrees shy, which is about somewhere around there compared to straight up. So the injector fires at about 60 degrees before the piston's all the way at the top of its, of its bore on the exhaust stroke because it's getting ready to pull that fuel down on the intake stroke. And the reason they do it at 300 degrees is they, they spray fuel on the back of a hot, a, hot, uh, a hot intake valve to help atomize the fuel. It, it helps to make it idle uh, with cleaner emissions because it's timed to spray on a hot intake valve at 300 degrees. When I say degrees, not temperature, I mean 300 degrees of ro crankshaft rotation. So, having said that, you have what's called a crankshaft position sensor that picks up tr signals on a crankshaft uh, a trigger wheel. This is your crank trigger wheel on a four point, this is actually off 5.7 V8. The Dodge has a trigger wheel, but it's the flywheel on the back of the motor. It's actually the flex plate for the automatic transmission, but it's a if you look at it, I'll, as a matter of fact, in this video, I'll post a picture of the Dodge flex plate. But the Dodge flex plate has eight holes in it that are picked up by the crankshaft position sensor, and that tells the computer where the engine is at, precisely where the engine is at in a 360-degree cycle. The problem with that is that in order to do sequential fuel injection and, and pick up 300 degrees as opposed to 360 or 480 or whatever, the computer has to have a, 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 a way of determining where it's at in a 720 degree cycle, not 360, but 720. With a single rotational sensor like this, you, on the crankshaft, you can only, you, you only have resolution of 360 degrees. You can't determine if it's in 360 or the, second, the first 360 or the second 360. However, when combined with the cam sensor with that half, half uh, circle shaped device, since the cam sensor, excuse me, since the cam and the distributor rotate once for every two engine revolutions, you now have enough resolution. This sensor, this sensor here combined with that sensor now gives you the first 360, this will be on, and the second 360, that will be off. So now you have resolution of 720 degrees with this one, with the crank sensor. So... So the injectors are spraying based on information provided by this when the cam sensor basically allows uh, sequential fuel injection or synchronized. So it's, the fuel synchronization is not coming from the cam sensor, is not timing the injector. It's just telling the computer which 360 degree rotation this device is rotating through. Now, why would I say that or how do what you might say, what makes you say that? Well, here it is. There's where the common sense comes into play. When you have an engine, a V8 engine, pushrod engine, you have, a, you have the crankshaft gear, you have a timing chain, you have a cam gear, then you have another gear on the distributor in the back of the motor rotating distributor off the cam. You've got one, two, three, four places where you can build up wear and tear and have too much tolerance or have more tolerance. So you have a lot of slop and slack in that mechanical system from the crankshaft to the distributor. So why would an engineer, why would anybody time, precisely time an injector to work off a sloppy system like that off of this signal? They don't, the, the, the answer is they don't. The answer is, and it's simple, all this sensor does is tell the computer which part of a 720 degree cycle this sensor is in. It's either in the first 360 or the second 360. And then the computer's got all the information it needs and all the, all the precision that it needs off of this sensor. So there's no sense or there's no reason that it would use something sloppy like the distributor signal to time the injector fire. And the reason they call it fuel synchronization is you cannot synchronize the spraying of the fuel injectors without that signal. Because now, are you in the first 360? or in your the second 360. So you cannot precisely say, okay, I'm at 300 degrees spray, 
you're either at 300 or you're going to be what uh, 660 so but if you spray at 660 you're spraying at the wrong time so technically fuel synchronization is either turned on or is turned off by that sensor but it doesn't have anything to do with when the injector sprays is once the computer can do it so my hunch is that in a Dodge system, and I'm talking about Dodge now, I'm extrapolating GM to Dodge. In the Dodge system, I would bet that you can disconnect the cam sensor and the system would still run, but it would revert back to batch fire mode, meaning it fires the injectors all at the same time once per revolution. And there, was, there is a way to prove that. You can use what's called a Noid light. A Noid light is a light you stick in the uh, injector connector. You pull the connector off the injector, put the Noid light in the injector, and then the, the light will flash every time the computer tries to turn that injector on. So if you're to put two Noid lights side by side on two injectors, if they're in sequential mode, these lights should flash alternately. They shouldn't flash at the same time. They would flash, one would flash, then a certain amount of time would go by, and then the other would flash. They would flash, you know, one after the other in, in series. But if you're in batch fire mode, they're going to flash at the same time together. They'll be flash 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 together synchronized so that would be what's called batch fire mode because the injectors will no longer be timed with the cylinder they're just spraying in you in into the intake no matter when i bet that's how it would do it but um matter of fact um pretty soon i may run that test and put a third video in this series to prove it but having said all that um the bottom line is that fuel synchronization is not timing the injector with the cam sensor with the, with the rotation of the stripper now why do they give you a number uh why do they give you why in a scan to why do you set, have a number to set the fuel synchronization to well the bottom line is that the dodge engineers knew there was going to be slack and, and, and tolerances in the system you got the like say so you got the cam the crank gear the timing chain the cam gear over time they get really worn out and then you got the gear on the distributor that wears with the cam so you get a lot of slop in that system so they give you a, a range of, of uh, degrees of crankshaft rotation that that can't that the distributor the distributor can be rotated within a certain range and synchronize that cam signal within a certain range of degrees with the crank sensor and it be considered synchronized. If it's outside that synchronization range, it'll set a code. And then in GM, it's code P0340, I think. I could be wrong about that, but I think that's what it's called. It's called cam synchronization error. So in the Dodge, they give you a range of fuel synchronization numbers that you set with a scan tool, and you rotate the distributor, and you want to get it, uh, in my guess, you want to get it zero, because that would give you some tolerance either to one side or the other of where they want it to be. But there's a lot of people out there on the Internet saying, oh, my engine runs best at plus eight, or my engine runs best at minus four. Um, I, you know, I hate to bust or burst their bubble, but my personal opinion and, and the, the, the uh, information I'm presenting I think it, to me it's pretty clear that it has nothing to do with it. All you're doing is setting the, um, you're just rotating the distributor and setting it so you don't get a code and that the system will run in sequential mode. Because it, like I say, it, it's for sequential mode to happen, you need that sensor coordinating the computer's understanding of where this sensor's at. Once the sensor, once the computer knows where this sensor's at, it's got all the information it needs to inject, to fire the injectors in a very precise location because the resolution of the sensor is a whole lot more than that. So I think that pretty much covers it. Um, if you have uh, any information to, uh, to uh, dispute my claim that uh, that's how Dodge fuel synchronization works, I'd love to hear it in the comments. Um, not trying to antagonize anybody, just want to learn. And, uh, but I hope I've shared enough information that I think uh, that if you're paying a lot of money for somebody to say, yeah, I'll set your fuel synchronization to make your engine run a lot better on a dyno, um, I personally think you're getting ripped off. So um, having said that, um, let's hear the comments and uh, send them away. And thanks for watching.